One of the big discussions around Bruce Roberts' designs was uh, the, the placement of the skeg at the rear of the, the, under the underneath of the hull, but the strength of the, the actual structure around it. And so because it's quite a long, thin skeg, in the early designs, there was a tendency for it to um, vibrate or wobble around in the water, um, oscillate if you like, um, and a lot of people recommended to put some extra stiffness in, but I wanted to go the whole hog, so I've actually put, these are 6mm plate, so these braces across here, 6mm plate, and I put them and they sit just above the skeg, there's two of them as you can see, and there you can see I put another two big web plates where the rudder post and the rudder tube go through. And uh, so that's extremely strong in the area now too. Um, I, I just did that because there's no point in finding out after 12 months of being on the boat that you've got these oil canning problems of the hull or you've got flexible, or you've got flexing in the skeg and rudder and things like that. Better to try and address that now, make sure it's strong enough and not have to worry about it too much in the future. Now one thing I have to do, which was a bit of a, a little bit of a faux pas on my part, and it's, it's annoying, is um, I originally put the rudder post about 14 inches too far forward um, because I incorrectly measured it, again, which was my own mistake. But um, I moved it, I obviously you can see, actually you can see from there where the, where the post was before that round world. So I took it and moved it back to the right position and put these new webs in there. But what's happened is when I've welded it, the, the post is actually, as the world's called, they've pulled the post, um, I think forward a couple of mil at the very top edge of the, of the flange here. So this edge of this flange has come forward very slightly. And what it's done is misaligned the actual bearing. So now the bearing doesn't quite fit inside, it's a tight fit anyway, but it doesn't quite fit inside the rudder post. So what I'm gonna have to do is put a cut along here and a cut behind it. And I might even I might even weld a brace, a heavy duty brace from here down to the profile bar and just bring this forward. It, it literally only needs to come, you can see the gap there. It literally needs to come like a one mil, half a mil to one mil forward. So I think I'll get that movement pretty easily by putting a, a brace in the back. After I cut these welds, I'll just I'll put a wedge behind it and bring that forward a tiny bit and then weld it back up. And once it's nice and tight, I'll, I'll weld fully around put, and keep the brace in place. So that's one of the things I have to do. Um, this is the rear berth. Um, and again, it's quite a, quite a roomy berth. It's very large. I've got to finish off shaping the cut out there and putting the doorway in. Um, and that's, so that's not too bad, there's not too much work there. Once that's done, the next thing is right here, where you can see the bottom of the ladder and along that profile bar there, that's where the engine bed's going to go and the prop shaft will go down through there. I think the engine bed comes from around that bay there and across to here and the prop shaft goes down, the prop tube goes down through that profile bar, almost right where the, um, the profile bar meets the the bulkhead that goes through there, so there's a bit of cutting out to do there. Uh, what else have I got to do internally after that? I've got to put chain plates in, so chain plates go from approximately, I think, oh, around, just, just forward of this frame here. So chain plates go up under there, and obviously there's two each side. In fact, three each side, and then the forward and rear chain plates for the rigging. But um, yeah, it, it's it's really slow because I'm on my own and I only get to work weekends. It's a really slow project, and I, I, I you know I was convinced I'd have this boat at least ready to to put in the water after it was fitted out. I, 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 re I really thought four years I would see it finished. Um, possibly not including the sails and rigging. That my, uh, what my plan was if, if I didn't get to that point, I was going to put on in the water, live on it, and save up the extra bit and then put the mast and rigging on last. But um, 
you know, it's been six and a half years, as I said, I've had quite a long break, but it's been six and a half years actually working on the boat so far, and this is still where it's at, there's still a lot to do. But, you know what, we've, we've had long, hard discussions about it, Cathy and I, for a long time now. And at the end of the day, it's just time. It's just time, it's uh, be patient, don't rush it, don't panic. We have got plenty of years of working life left in us and plenty of years to finish the boat and, and still enjoy life. So what we're gonna do is carry on with the boat um, and however long it takes, it takes. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna try and do some overseas travel every now and then, a bit of camping around Australia, just to fill in the times and break, break the work life up until we're ready to go. But, um, you know, in, in, in my heart, I couldn't, much as I would like to be on a boat right now, and we did talk about buying a boat, I, I don't think I could walk away from this now. It's part of me, you know, it's, it's, it's in my heart and soul, it really is, and I love it. So, anyway, it's a bit of an update, and um, once I get some work done, I'll do some more videos and um, catch up with everyone again.